All right, let's check out the starting lineup for tonight's race. Jason Keller, second in points, is on the pole for the second time in 2002. Scott Riggs, his teammate, is alongside. Back in row two on the inside, Michael Walton starting exactly where he's going to start tomorrow for the Sharpie 500. Harvick on the outside. Missouri's Jamie McMurray in row number three with Jeff Green, who won the Bush Series race here in March. Back on the inside of row four, Mike McLaughlin and Greg Biffle, the leader in the, in the Bush Series points. Scott Wimmer driving for Bill Davis, going to come from row number five, and there is Jimmy Spencer. He never forgets, and he certainly remembers how to get it done here. One of his best tracks. Starting in 12th today is Kenny Wallace. Let's talk to Kenny. Kenny, Benny Parsons, you got me? 10-4, Benny, I hear you. Well, first of all, happy birthday to you. Thank you. So, and congratulations on your victory Wednesday night in the All-Pro Series. 39. 39, but you won on Wednesday night. Was that, was that an early birthday present? Yeah, I guess it was. It was fun. So how's the Stacker 2 car? The Stacker 2 car is running good. It, uh, you know, usually qualify the top six. Found ourselves back here at 12, so... We just have to be patient, but it's, it's handling good. We'll just see how it plays out 100 laps into it. Okay, now don't get mad at anybody. If they spin you out, they didn't mean to. You know that, right? <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Good luck to you, Kenny. Thank you, Benny. Kenny Wallace on his 39th birthday, the 94 winner of this race, going to come from row number six. Looking through the rest of the starting lineup for tonight's race. Larry Foyt, Shane Meal, way back in row number 15. There's Kenny's brother, Mike Wallace, the middle Wallace brother, Bush Miller. And how about Jack Sprague? Talk about a season that's fallen apart here in these last five or six weeks. Really struggling, these guys. Todd Bodine, back in 36 with a good race car. I hear Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to spot for Kerry tonight. We're going to listen in on the radio and see what we hear. And Derek Cope, back in the... 40th position. He is the late entry into that 49 car. And the youngster Brian Vickers brings up the rear of the field in his Dodge. Those who failed to qualify. Casey Kane driving for Robert Yates. Most notable on that list. He spun out on his qualifying lap. Wasn't high enough in points because they're not running all the races to get a provisional. Comes down for the start. NASCAR Bush Series racing from Bristol before 120,000 fans. What a crowd. What a race it's going to be. Jason Keller gets the lead on the break. Harvick to second. Scott Riggs third. Michael Waltrip fourth. Really bottoming out coming off turn two. You remember this race a year ago? Greg Biffle was leading. About 14 laps to go. Cut a tire down. Faded no, back I into the field that. and finished 18. Well, you had that written down, right? Yeah. That's why I remember it. Here's Jason Keller starting to get into traffic. Took 12 laps. That's Derek. Oh, Cole. trouble. Turn four. Kevin Grubb. Still green. Still green. Scrubb's car down in the apron in the bottom. And the yellow flag is out. First one. Took 12 laps to get it. That's... And Grubb gets lapped. Oh. Looked like Kevin dove underneath Ricky Hendrick there. And Hendrick shut the door on him instead of taking Hendrick out. He kind of took himself out or he spun the car. And lost a lap as Steve Grissom goes by the 34 car. One more replay. On board Hank Parker Jr. That's Tim Fiedler in the 31 car. Yep. Nice One. job there by Steve Grissom and Johnny Sawyer. For the Marlite Sharpie 500. I wonder if he's still wearing that Dick Trickle t-shirt. He put on a Dick Trickle t-shirt about two months ago as, as kind of a, you know, Trickle... Wisconsin, one of his boyhood racing heroes, said it brought him good luck. They started running well when he put the T-shirt on. I hope he's washed it. Caution, turn four. Larry Gunselman almost came right back up in front of the leaders in that 94 car. <laughs> I hope he has two. All right, there's two. You were saying? <laughs> as, the, as the night wears on and as it gets a little bit cooler, the cars theoretically should get a little bit tighter. Oh, he got broken up. 
watching that happen and the uh Oh, it's not done yet. Mike Wallace caught Steve Grissom. There's five of them spun behind him as they jacked up on the brakes. A 94 car slid up, and I didn't see the first car he got into, but Stacy Compton, Jack Sprague, Larry Foyt, Brian Vickers all caught up in it. Kerry Earnhardt just collected Jack Sprague trying to get turned around. I think 94 car here, Gunzelman, yeah. And he's working on Grissom, and he slides up the racetrack, gets into Steve. Oh, I, I disagree. Gunselman's left side tires never moved off that yellow line. Track, well, I think Steve, there was Steve came down on him. <laughs> you see Ricky Hendrick in the five car kind of drive through. Grissom comes back down, and there comes oh. Mike Wallace. I know what you were thinking, though. Gunselman was a lap down, and Grissom was trying to get around him. Yeah. And he wasn't getting any break. With Mike Wallace. Spin it for you, Mike. Low, go low. Low, lower. <laughs> the junior got a piece of that. Here's another look. Nine cars tangled up in this one. Well, that was behind what really That was started. behind the wreck, yeah. That, that's Larry Fort getting booted from behind and 24 car Sprague and See the 40 car, Brian Vickers, they had to tow his car away. Vickers, Steve Grissom, Mike Wallace are behind the wall, and let's try this again, shall we? Casey Mears loses a lap as he's on pit. Oh, trouble, turn one. At least a dozen cars involved. Oh, if we're going to get to 10, we may not have enough cars left. And the 54 car, I will tell you, got a lap back. There he goes. Kevin Grum. All right. Top of the screen. Is that Mark Green and Hamilton Jr. that tangled to start it? I don't know. See Shane Mill, the 47 car. <laughs> This looks good, look. On board, Mark Green. Fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Looks like he got hit. hit my friend. So Mark Green and Hamilton Jr. tangled to start Got this one. Got the right rear a little bit, guys, and then the right front in the wall. Fourth caution is out. Fires down inside turn one. And it looks like in the back that Hamilton Jr. right there. A little bit under green, it looked like. It. And, Wally, that's exactly like what you talked about at the top of the show. If you make contact with someone going in the corner like that, we got big problems. It's going to be a crash. One, two, and that three, is a crash. Five, six. Boy, Gibbs, a 20 car, about a beautiful car. Seven, eight, nine, ten involved in all. <laughs> Marty? Man, that car gets <laughs> off the corner so good. Here he goes for the lead, put him back in front. Number one on the side of the car, number one in your hearts. No contest. So Jimmy Spencer gets back what was given up on pit road, retakes the top spot for team owner James Finch. The fourth spot. Kevin Harvick is on pit road. Something's wrong with a left rear tire. Looks like it might be flat or something. Looks like that tire's up in the fender well. Yeah, something like he's wrong. got a broken track bar or something. It's definitely wrong there. Marty, you got Kevin? I do. He promptly dumped an entire bottle of water on his head. What happened? What happened? I hit the kill switch. It doesn't need to be in there. All right. Obviously, he's uh, a little upset with himself, I think, in this case. And uh, he said he hit the kill switch, and that killed the motor. And uh, when you're not running for points, you know what? It's not even worth trying to go back out. Matt Yoakum. Well, Al, we told you at the beginning of the show that Randy Goss, Bill Scrucci, said the key tonight is keeping the fenders on it. Well, this place is so brutal, it's even tough on the pace car. The pace car got hit tonight by a wrecker. Nobody's safe down here. <laughs> Look out, guys. Be careful down there. That's all I can tell you. No kidding. We don't want any pit reporters being hit. Well, let's not go that far. Oh, okay. Sorry. Well, the way this race started off, I'd have never thought it had been this clean. 
We had a wreck at lap 14, 24, 35, 44. Those ones that wrecked uh, at lap 35 and 44 took out uh, 11 and 14 cars each. Or well, took out half the field, so we didn't have a shot at 10. Yeah. So your over-under is going to miss. And Allen gets one right for once. How about that? Jimmy Spencer took the lead at lap number 109 for the first time, led 40 laps at that time, and he went back out in front at lap 160, got shuffled back to third on a set of caution flag pit stops. Quickly, though, marched back through to the lead, and he, it looks like, is going to lead the final 90 laps of this event. But still got five to go. This is Bristol. Anything can happen. And most often time does. I talked about a minute ago that Greg Biffle was slipping back into the clutches of McLaughlin for uh, third and fourth place. Now McLaughlin has fallen back, so even that settled out. Really did thin the field out with a lot of those crashes. And Jimmy's in a lot of traffic right now. But we've got a great battle going on right now between Kenny Wallace and Jeff Green. Jeff Green the 21, Kenny in the 48. Battle for fifth. The birthday boy, Kenny Wallace. And up front, Spencer closing in on uh, 11th place, Jamie McMurray in that 27 to try and put him a lap down. Dom dominates a pretty good word. Yes, I don't think he's going to have to worry about... Oh, we see his car spin! Stand in front of you. Careful, Jimmy. Dig it, get going. Jimmy, you better get there going. Go, get You're going to get past. Go. Here we comes Scott Wimmer. Oh! White flag. Final lap at Bristol. Can Wimmer get close enough to do a bump and run? If he does, he better keep on running. <laughs> <laughs> keep running till tomorrow, huh? Here he comes. Can he get close enough? Off turn four, no. Jimmy Spencer wins the Food City 250. He had the race well in command. And then a lap car got sideways in front of him and erased all of his advantage. Like you said, it's not over till it's over. <laughs> it's Bristol. That's a great job by Tim Saunders in the 19 car to not spin out. Check this out now. Jimmy Spencer had the race well in command, it, and then things went wrong in front of him. I'll guarantee you, he, it, this got his attention. You see him dropping down the corner, right in front of him, parking sideways, so he checks up. In the meantime, they're screaming in Wimmer's ear, go, go, go. And I mean, he just about pulled it off. In fact, he was awfully polite right there. 